Hi, this is CB Radio Magazine, and today in front of us we've got a Cobra 148 GTL, one of the most popular radios of all time. I picked this up at a garage sale, but it's a little dirty, and I'm going to clean it up, and I figured today would be a great opportunity to kind of show you guys what I do to clean a radio. So when we look up close, you can see that this dirt, dust, or whatever it is, is on there. It's kind of grimy. It's almost stuck there. It's not stuff you can just blow off, so we're going to have to give it a pretty deep clean. I suspect that there's even more dust in some of the holes and nooks and crannies here. Um, let's take a look at the rest of the radio. And it's mostly just dust. It was sitting on a shelf, and it seems like up top it's just dusty. Uh, the stuff on the face of the radio is definitely a little more sticky, grimy. I don't know. The sides looked fine. The back of the radio looks great, and that's actually really good. If you don't see any rust or any corrosion, that means that, yeah, it got dusty, but it was dry. Uh, this is a Made in Malaysia one, so one of the popular ones. So overall, that looks pretty good, and I just will go through the cleaning steps and kind of show you how we do this. We're going to start with just getting some of the surface dust off the top. All right, nothing fancy. We're just starting off with a damp paper towel. We're just going to wipe off some of this surface dust. Um, I don't think it's a huge problem when I clean these just to use some very light amount of water. The shop isn't too cold right now, so it'll dry out real quick. And, you know, you want to make sure you don't use such a wet cloth that it would get inside any of the screw holes or get any moisture inside the radio. This is already almost drying off. Um, you can see it's kind of dirty already. So just give it a quick wipe, get the surface stuff off. Again, just make sure you're not using something where you're dripping water inside that's going to get any of the screw holes or down inside the radio or anything. Now we want to clean the face of the radio, but first we got to get the knobs off. So you will take off these two-piece knobs, and some of them are going to have this little uh, clip inside that helps create a little tension. And you want to make sure as you take these off, you don't lose them. So keep them together, put them back inside there if you need to. Uh, the little end knob, smaller knob, comes off usually quite easy. The uh, outer knob sometimes gives you a little trouble. So you can just pull straight out. Make sure you don't put downward pressure. So pull straight out. And sometimes they're a little difficult to pull out. What I'll use is my tuning tool. It's plastic, so it won't scrape the face of the radio. And I just kind of wedge them out very gently. You want to make sure you don't put any downward pressure on the control because you don't want that shaft to get bent or damage anything in there. So you have to make sure when you do this, I just put it in just a hair and create just a tiny bit of pressure because some of these are kind of sticky sometimes. They get stuck on there. And this creates just enough release to pull the knob off easily. And so I use this just to easily release the knobs off here. Once we have them off, if you take a look, you can see it's quite dirty in those areas behind the knobs. And we're going to need to clean all this out. There's a bunch of gunk in there that's pretty gross. So we're going to clean all of that out. Next step is to remove the case, either side, um, top and bottom, as to see what we're dealing with on the inside here, and also so we can get the face of the radio loose. And not a whole lot of dust on the inside of the radio, which is a good thing. And once we go to take off the speaker side, you need to detach the connections to the speaker. Those just pull right off. I don't know how many of you guys have gotten inside radios before, but uh, those just pull right off. Pretty simple on the tabs there. And then you can put the stuff aside and get into the inside of the radio. Inside of the radio looks very clean, not a whole lot of dust or any corrosion or anything, so that's great. And uh, the next step is going to remove the screws on the side of the face so that we can pull the face off the front of the radio. We are going to take the face off, but as you can see, there's a bunch of hair and other stuff that's accumulated at the base of the control shaft. So we're going to clean all of this off, and I'll show you what it looks like once we get that done. So we got these all cleaned out now. Looks really good. I forgot to mention I use a little isopropyl alcohol and these are all looking really good. Now that we've wiped these down, we can use a little control cleaner inside the pots. So over time when the pots sit, they can get some gunk inside of them as well. And when you turn them, you'll get that crackly noise and it doesn't sound great. So we got to spray some cleaner in there and there's little holes that you can spray the cleaner in. And basically you're going to spray it in and as it moves, it's going to clean the surface as it turns and make it work nice again so it's not crackly. I like to use something called Neutral. Uh, I've been using this stuff for years. Uh, of course, it's got all the hazardous uh, <laughs> um, warnings on it, but it's really good for cleaning out pots. I've used it on uh, studio uh, audio equipment as well. You just spray it in the holes a little bit, and then you work the pot around, and it cleans it off, and it gets it nice and makes it work again. Um, and that's about all it takes. You just keep working it around. 
To clean off the face of the radio to get all this stuff clean, I like to use uh, these wet wipes uh, that you get, just, just the standard cleaner ones, not the Clorox bleach ones, but just the ones that have the disinfecting stuff on them. You can see they are uh, pretty durable and better than paper, so you can actually scrub a little bit. I like to use my fingernail, just kind of get behind there, go along the edges, and really work it around to get all that stuff that's loose. And it, it cleans it up really well. I'll just, you know, again, it's not too wet, but uh, it's enough that I can kind of work it. And it, it's the fabric that has a little more texture to it as well. So it's not abrasive, but it's abrasive enough. And some of the stuff like that's a scratch. I'm not going to be able to get that off. I thought it might be gunk. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell when a radio is really dirty sometimes what's underneath. So there are some scratches on this, but we'll just keep going and see what we get uh, at the end after we get some of the stuff off. Now we got all that gunk out that I showed you earlier that was behind the knobs, but we didn't get into the switches a whole lot. And to get into the switches, what I will use is a Q-tip. And as you can see, it's already dirty on one end, but I'll stick the Q-tip in, I'll spray it with a little bit of cleaner, and then I pull it out. And if it's a little damp, look at what comes out. Oh my goodness. Yeah, there's so much dust and I don't know, dog hair, dirt, dust, whatever it is in there. Uh, so I will just keep doing this with the Q-tips. Usually these switches have sat in one position for a long time. So you just need to go into that one area uh, and I will continue to do it. I have these slightly damp, as I mentioned, and I will continue to get some stuff. Yeah, there's dirt in there. Um, just kind of a simple little cleaning on these. If you switch it down and you go in, you're probably not going to get anything because it's been sitting in one position for years, but you still can get in there and try and see what you get. But uh, yeah, just nice and easy, little damp, and you come out with some dirt on those. So a lot of guys may not do this next step, but they uh, the knobs often will get dirt. And if it's a smoker's radio, they'll get that grime in the grooves and on the knobs. And I hate that stuff. I really like radios to look clean when I'm done. So I will get my Q-tip with a little bit of solution on it. And I will go around and go through each groove as much as I can and just try and clean it up with a little bit of solution on the Q-tip here and clean out the inside. And it does a pretty good job. You can see a little dirt on uh, both those ends from doing some of these. And you can also see here on my, uh, just another one of those wet wipes, you can see how much just from going around and scrubbing them, how much comes off. And this is all the dirt that you can see on this uh, current wet wipe is coming off of these knobs here. So I like this stuff again because it's just a little damp, but it's not too wet and it's not going to ruin the finish or anything. Uh, make sure to keep track of those little connector pieces as well. But some of the stuff is not going to come off, and that's where I will get a plastic tuning tool again, and I will go down these grooves and break loose anything that I can't get out uh, with the Q-tip. So I go along every single one, kind of slide it around. I have the just the right width on this so that I can kind of scrape it, get both sides, get down in the edges, and then again, I'll wipe it off and clean it again. And I'll do this for every single knob. Takes a while, but uh, I, I like doing this better than just trying to throw them in a solution and wipe them off. And here is all the carnage from our cleaning. Uh, kind of gross, right? Look at that hair, grime, whatever else was on there. And man, I will tell you, this wasn't even that dirty of a radio. I have cleaned some really gross radios, and this one wasn't even that bad, and that all came out of it. And the case on it was pretty good. It was tough to tell because it was so dusty, but as you can see, just a couple small scratches. And look at the face, all shiny. Isn't that thing pretty now? It looks great. Um, you know, and this is going to be the difference between selling this thing on eBay for a hundred bucks versus maybe 200 bucks. If you take the time to clean it, or if I'm, you know, doing a radio for somebody, I want to make sure it looks really nice. Unfortunately, I couldn't see this cause it was so dirty. It does have some scratching on it. This was all there. Uh, as I cleaned it, I found these little scratches that are on the faceplate. I don't know how they got there. I mean, you know, faceplates over time sometimes get some weird stuff and, uh, can degrade. These are kind of weird scratches, but you know, unfortunate up close, but when you're a couple feet away, it actually looks pretty good. You wouldn't notice it. It's, you know, a 30, 40 year old radio at this point. So yeah, sure. It's going to have a little bit of a scratching on it. Uh, we did all the, uh, control cleaner into all the pots and everything now is super smooth. It was a little scratchy initially on the volume control and a couple other things when I was uh, working it in, but now, yeah, working really well, smooth control. Uh, everything's working great. And again, like I said, it, it's a difference between taking something that may have been worth a hundred bucks to somebody, 150 in its condition. I'll show you a picture of what it looked like before. There you go. You try and post that picture on eBay, you might get a hundred, 150 for it. 
And once it's all clean, maybe you get 200, maybe you get a little bit more. If it's an even uh, better condition than this one, you might get 250 once you take the time to clean it up. So I love to see these radios looking beautiful and clean again. And tell me what you guys are using. Post up in the comments. Tell me what you guys are using to clean your radios and what kind of success you have. I've been using the same stuff for years, but always uh, happy to hear something new. But uh, yeah, love to see these radios shine again. Thanks for watching CB Radio Magazine.